What is up guys, in this video we're going to be talking about ranges in Swift. So let's get started with an example immediately and the first thing we're going to be covering is a regular range. So to create a regular range essentially all we have to do is create a variable or we don't have to create a variable but of course we're going to assign it to this variable so that we can use it later. So here we're going to type in 10 numbers and this is going to equal the value of 1 to 10 inclusive. So we will be printing both 1 and 10 when we generate this list of numbers. And to create a range, we just need to include the three dots, or also known as an ellipsis. And this one is referred to as a closed range. But now we're going to go ahead and also create a half-opened range. So to do this, we have to create another variable, and it's going to be called four numbers. And this is going to equal the value of one, two, five, except we're going to add a back arrow right before the five. And we actually have to remove one of the dots. Now we're going to go ahead and create a variable called number list. And this is going to be a list of type integer, and it's just going to equal an empty list. Now for i in 10 numbers, we're going to go ahead and refer to the number list and append to it the value of i. So now when we go ahead and print the number list, we should have 10 values inside there. So one, two, 10. And this works also if we want to add a hundred values, we can go one to a hundred. And we can also do negative 100 to a hundred. It's just important that these values go in incrementing order. We can't do 100 to minus 100. That will not work. The program will throw an error. Now let's go ahead and loop through the four numbers so you can see which values will be printed. So when we loop this, we're going to get one, two, three, four, because four is one number less than five. And we can also do it with a hundred, and we're only going to get numbers printed until 99. But now there's also another type, which are called infinite ranges. And to demonstrate this, I'm going to create two different variables. One's going to be called negative range, and that's going to equal two dots, a left arrow and an upper limit such as 10. Then we're going to create a second one which is going to be called positive range and that's going to equal all of the numbers above zero. So this is the syntax for doing both of these. Now if we go ahead and print these such as negative range, we're going to get returned a partial range up to upper bound 10 which means every single number until 10. So it's not going to allow us to include 10 because that's not part of the list, but it will go up until nine. As you may recall, this arrow just tells us that every number until one number less than 10 will be added. And if we change this to the positive range, we're going to notice that the lower bound is going to be zero, which means all of the numbers above zero are going to be added to the list. And we can even do some changes to check that this is true, such as positive range, contains, let's say 1000. And if it's true, it's going to return true. We can even write a number such as 1 million. And it's still going to say true because this is an infinite positive number. If we try to do minus 12, it's going to return false because minus 12 is not in the positive range. But if we try to test this in the negative range, we're going to get true returned because negative 12 is in the negative range. But if we try to check if it contains 10, we're going to get false because as I mentioned earlier, it's only going to go up to nine. Now there's actually one last thing I should show you is that these ranges can be used to access items. So if we go ahead and type in var name list and we decide to enter some names such as Brian, Mario, Luigi, and Jeff. We can now access these names by using the range notation. So if we go ahead and print, let's say name list from the index of one to two, we're only going to get Mario and Luigi printed out, just like that. And we can of course use the arrow syntax if we want. We can go ahead and put a zero here and we're just going to get Brian and Mario. But it's just good to keep this in mind because someday this might save you some time with accessing elements. But that's actually all I wanted to cover in today's video. And in tomorrow's video, we're going to be going over closures.